Greetings citizens, and welcome back to The Hidden Dagger Inn. My name is Peon, and today we're discussing a topic that I talked about in my latest stream, and I wanted to put out a few more thoughts I had on it. So without further ado, let's begin. Ready to work. With Alpha 2 coming up very shortly and on the horizon, the topic of Alpha 2 longevity has been brought up again. We all know that Alpha 2 will last for some time. Margaret and Steven have said as much in their streams. We also know that typical true Alpha 2s usually last about 6 to 12 months. Now, I think 6 months is definitely a little bit too short for a game as ambitious as Ashes of Creation is. That would be great. I'm sure all of us would be very excited, but I think it's also very unrealistic because we obviously want to have a good experience at launch, and we don't want to have a rushed out piece of exploitable garbage like new world i'm more in the camp of about a year possibly a year and a half maybe a little bit less and you know depending on what kind of setbacks they're dealing with i believe a quarter four release though in 2025 is feasible quarter four is the best selling time for these games and it's the holiday season gamers have more free time and potentially a gift for these younger folks who've not yet joined the workforce one of the only cons about releasing a game in the Christmas holiday season are normally just some of your other competition, but come on, who cares? This is Astro Creation, the rest are just mere sheep. One of the reasons I feel so strongly about this is look at all the developers they now have. And we're not just talking about any interns. They've had the pick of the litter, highly qualified chads that they have hired now. They've spent much of these years developing systems and tech to expedite the process, the very process that they are in now. Heading into Alpha 2, and with Steven's change in how he presents things to us, where he won't show them until they're pretty much done, i.e. the server meshing, we have to assume that there is much, much more we have not seen yet, and they are simply not going to show us before we see Alpha 2, or perhaps even launch. For Alpha 2 purposes, there's going to be the things that they hold back because they want people who are experiencing this for the first time while playing it and the viewers who are watching it. They wanted to be able to see stuff for the first time and go, bro, oh, did you see that, bro? Before I start and introduce you my reasoning for my truncated timeline, I see all the time the Doomer saying 2030, 2027, and all these crazy timelines, but yet it's never backed up by any sound reasoning behind it other than, well, it's taking so long. This, if they're going off of early production time, then sure. But Intrepid is in a completely different place now than it was even at the start of Alpha 1. Now it's time to let me explain to you why I believe they will target this timeline. So take a seat, apply that copium mask, and listen up. The first and most important reason is maintaining player excitement and engagement. We already know that they're going to be releasing constant updates, giving us a little bit more candy each month. We have a highly anticipated rogue that everyone's going to tune into to see if they love it or hate it and how it's going to work. The summoner has a ton of interest behind it. And of course, who doesn't want to see the completely hyped up naval and water combat system? And oh, let's not forget about the Tonar, <laughs> the Tolnar, and the Underrealm and how it works. There's so many biomes that we've also been yet to be shown. I fully expect a steady stream of new content and focused testing in these areas to keep the player engagement high. And by doing this, they're going to keep the interest high. After every patch, I'm sure players will come back if they've stepped away for a little bit. This is a smart marketing, and it will also allow for focus testing while Alpha 2 is persistent, minus downtime for patches and server maintenance. Unlike other early access games, this game will probably wipe, and there will be a wipe before launch. So while we're talking about this, it is important for you to embrace this and the wipes that come with it. I, for one, am hoping to see wipes because we're only going to be allowed to level to 30 when Alpha 2 first launches. So having steady level increases along the way or testing higher level areas or some notabilities are going to be very important. Another reason for wipes is it's important for Intrepid to see how their game handles large influxes of players in all the starting areas at once, everyone doing the same quest. Will there be enough mobs for people to kill or are we gonna have to be waiting around pulling our tallywhackers waiting for mobs to spawn? 
And one of the reasons it's gonna be important to retest the leveling is since we only get to go to 30 early on, as they introduce more levels and eventually get to max level, people are gonna to wanna to test how long it truly takes to get to level 50. Their current plan is four to six hours a day, leveling taking about 45 days. Total of 250 hours. Now that sounds great for normal players, but people all know that there's no lifers and degenerates out there, like myself, will be very much probably see level 50s in about 10 to 12 days, putting in an 18 hour day. I hear the arguments that it will depend on the node and how it levels. And I'm calling shenanigans because Intrepid would not have used this timeline if it in fact it was depending on node leveling. Reason being is because alts later on will have a much faster experience because then the nodes will be leveled, the monsters will be higher, will have fully built freeholds with taverns that have the rested experience bed to increase rested experience and the rate you get it, also along with the food buffs that you might obtain. In my opinion, leveling is a little bit too fast. Now, I know a lot of people don't share the same thought, but you know the, the wipes will give Intrepid and the players a chance to see if the leveling speed in fact does feel good or if they need to tweak it. Another reason to embrace the wipes is it's a great opportunity to try another class and learn the other classes so you later know how that class works. You know their weaknesses. It's gonna be really important later on. And with every wipe, there's gonna be players who are very excited to make their mark on Vera and see what the fastest and best way to level is. Could you level up through crafting and how fast is it? Is it viable? Also, guilds are gonna be highly competitive and wanna come up with new and innovative strategies on getting those nodes and castles faster and what direction they might go with when they get that node as far as the mayoral and what direction they like to take with it. Now, I know I've seen this before, Peon, I don't want to level over and over. I don't want to make go have to go to 50 every time. Just give me a button where I can be level 50. Maybe that might be the case that they do for very specific tests. I believe they did it in Alpha 1. They let us get to level 15. But I don't think that's going to be the mechanic we're going to see very much. And I think the majority of the time is going to be the full leveling experience. Now, some players are not going to like this and they're going to drop off until launch. And that's okay because Alpha 2 will be reopening to other players and making sure that they have all the necessary players to find these exploits and bugs quicker. Now, onto the big reason that you don't want Alpha 2 to go too long. Avoiding burnout, a shorter, and by short, I mean at least a year, will help maintain player excitement while they add things throughout that time. A prolonged testing phase can lead to player fatigue, diminishing enthusiasm for the final release of the game. This is a very real thing. I've experienced it myself in the past, so don't feel like you need to go ham every test. Enjoy the moment. Really need work and enjoy on trying to find these bugs and exploits. I mean, that's why we're here, right? The last thing you wanna do is have hundreds and thousands of players testing, and at launch, we find that we miss some huge exploit that just utterly destroys the economy. There's nothing worse for the health of an MMO. And make sure you report those bugs and exploits. Don't be selfish and hold on to the dupe that you found because you wanna look cool. Let the developers know so they can get it fixed. The last reason I believe it's gonna go faster than we think is Focus content testing. Alpha 2 is expected to introduce more content and features, but it will be strategically focused by rolling out specific content and stages. Intrepid Studios can concentrate on testing their efforts and gathering detailed feedback on particular systems and mechanics. This targeted approach allows for more thorough testing of each feature, ensuring a higher quality and stability upon full release. Now, I'm sure they're gonna let us level up to level 50 at some point, and we're gonna see many things that Farrah has to offer, but I don't think, and I'm pretty sure that Intrepid is smarter than letting us and all the viewers see everything that the world of Farrah has to offer. I would hope that they're gonna hold stuff back for launch. And as far as the launch goes, Testers are gonna know when the game is getting close. As class balance feels better and the game loops have been fleshed out and working properly, secondary systems are working as intended. Content creators such as myself and all the others are gonna be making videos about the state of the game. And when you start hearing less complaints and more about how the game is starting to really feel good, that's when we're gonna know it's getting close. And I think one of the biggest reasons it could be sooner rather than three years like some or longer than people are saying is as long as I talked about those aforementioned things, the game loops and the secondary systems and somewhat of a class balance, 
there's so much that Steven wants to add in, but they have time to add that in. As they've said, they'll add stuff every three to six months. So there'll be constant content flowing in. But as long as we have those prerequisites, there should be plenty for us to do while they put that out. In conclusion, giving the dynamic server meshing almost being hammered out, which is most likely the biggest hurdle of any MMO, the collaborative community involvement with the feedback that we're going to give them, and the robust tech that they have already have in place for the world building, it is feasible along with all the developers that they continue plus 200 now to keep on hiring. Totally feasible for this timeline to happen. If you're still watching, I'd like to say thank you. And if you enjoyed the video, smash that like. If you wanna put something in comments about your ridiculous timelines, go ahead, but give me reasons why. Don't forget to check me out talking live on Twitch about anything Ash is a creation. Have a great day, Vera. Bye-bye. Work complete.